Season 3 of Fortnite has been out for a week now, and the shockwave of Midas' grand plan continues to echo throughout the map. And while Midas' attempt to break through the simulation into Vendor Tech Labs may have failed, this doesn't mean the story is over. Not by a long shot. The Battle Royale Island averted a massive wall of water, which would have destroyed everything, but still most of the map remains flooded. Leaks have revealed new possible POIs coming soon, and they suggest the map is going to be draining. And with that in mind, the question now begs to be asked, where is the storyline going from here, and what is going to happen? And if we want to have any idea of what may be to come, we're going to have to dive deep. But rather than with the storyline, today we're going to be looking at a character. Jules, the Engineer. As one of the most mysterious Fortnite characters, she is going to be the key to everything this season. And in order to figure out what is to come next, we need to understand her background and motives. And so that's exactly what we'll be doing today. Who is Jules? What is her relation to Midas? What does she hope to achieve? Just how far reaching is her grasp over the map? And craziest of all, does her background lore suggest a legitimate Kraken fight at the end of this season? Yeah, I, I wish I was joking on that last one, but no, I'm actually serious. <laughs> like, no clickbait, I promise you. Now, lastly, before we do get into it, we are getting so close to 3 million subscribers. So guys, if you could hit that button, it would be super appreciated. Otherwise, I will have to feed you to the sharks. But anyway, let's get into it. So if we're going to attempt to look to the future of what is to happen, I think it's important that we first get as much background information as possible. This will help give us a direction of who Jules is and what she wants. And already starting from here, we do run into some problems. Jules has been known about for months now, but Epic has been extremely secretive with her. And so really the only place we can start is with her relation to Midas. A lot of people have been speculating on this, suggesting how the two are connected, and while nothing is confirmed, we have been given a lot of hints that can point us in the right direction. So first of all, the speculation that the two have a close relationship seems to be pretty conclusive. In the Season 2 Battle Pass, you could visit Midas' office, and there was actually a photo of Jules on his desk in a picture frame. Now, I don't know about you guys, but all the photos I have of people lying around are of people that I actually care about. So this rules out any theories about Jules being a hired contract or anything like that. And then it also means that they're likely related either through blood, our close friends, or perhaps even partners. Now first, given Jules' age and appearance, we can rule out at least a few possibilities. There's no way Jules is significantly older than Midas, so she's certainly not a mother or anything like that either. And so with these ideas out of the way, it realistically comes down to three other possibilities. Jules has to either be the significant other, sister, or daughter of Midas. Determining which one she is, however, will make all the difference in determining her motives and this season's storyline. And so I first want to look at the possibility of daughter. I think this has been the most common association, but I also believe it's the least likely. And that is simply due to her age. While it's hard to say due to his gray complexion, Midas very roughly looks like he is somewhere between 25 and 35. He's still got all his hair, it's colored, and is not receding. Overall, he actually looks pretty young. Jules, on the other hand, looks younger, but not significantly. I would probably have to guess Jules to be somewhere between 20 and 30, and so even in the best case scenario, this would mean Minus would have had to have her at 15. So with that in mind, they're way too close in age, and I think we can rule out the possibility of Jules being Midas' daughter. Now next, let's look at the possibility of significant other. This theory holds up a little bit stronger. Beyond being close in age, they also have tons of tattoos and even share a similar edgy looking scowl. In some ways, they certainly carry the same vibe and energy, which can make for a compatible relationship. But my problem with this theory is that there is just no more evidence to back it up. And furthermore, they seem to be very different people at their core. Jules is a hands-on type engineer, while Midas is more of a master schemer manipulator. So it's possible, but the evidence doesn't really support this idea all that much. And so that only leads the sister possibility. So for Jules and Midas to be siblings, they would have to be similar in age, but not too close. Check. And okay, but what about biological features? Well, their skin tones are different, but we can assume Midas' skin is so pale because of his Golden Touch curse, so that's not really anything to go off of. But what about hair color? Well, it just so happens that they've both got extremely dark hair. Oh, and look at that, the eyes match too. 
yellowish green. Now, while one of Midas' eyes has been damaged, the unscarred one is almost exactly the same as Jewel's. So biology seems to suggest that they're related, and since offspring is off the table, sibling then seems to be the most likely bet. I also think that this makes sense in a more practical way. Look at how different these two are, despite being so similar. Midas looks sharp, he's well-dressed, a master manipulator and secret agent. Jules is dressed very casually, rough, as an advanced mechanic, and just looks so completely different from Midas. But despite this, they share a very similar energy and both have all sorts of tattoos. It almost feels like a case of classic sibling rivalry. While they are very similar in personality, in order to find meeting, they followed very different career paths in order to stand out from each other as their own people. So the evidence seems to suggest that Jules is the sister of Midas. He's got a photo of her in his office, they share facial features, eye and hair color, and the bit of sibling rivalry checks out as well. But what does that actually mean then? Well, I think the big point we can draw from this is that Jules is not likely to then follow Midas' plan. If the two were, say, a couple, it seems likely that their line of thinking would be much more in line. But like we in real life all might sometimes not get along with our siblings, it would make sense that Jules has her disagreements with Midas. And so at the very least, if they are siblings, this supports the idea that Jules' plan will not resemble Midas's and that she will do things her own way, as she always has. Now moving on from here, we also know that Jules is a member of Alter. She wears the symbol proudly on her shirt and has a shadow variant selectable style. The real question though, however, is how much power does Jules actually have? In the Season 2 Office event cutscene, we see a top secret file of Jules. This here alone suggests that she is incredibly important, as the only other two people on this table were Midas and Lynx. Now, if Midas was playing both sides of the coin, then surely the power and sway he had over the groups could easily have transferred straight to Jules. She's already taken over the agency, transforming it into the authority, and there isn't anything to make us think that she wouldn't be the top boss. The only other two possibilities would be the Chaos Agent, or perhaps Midas lurking in the background. So if Jules is now the highest in command of Alter, then realistically this means she is the most powerful person on the island. She has control of all Alter bases along with Alter and Shadow members. And that's not even her greatest strength. No, that would actually be her skills as an engineer. In the short time we've known her, we've seen her create Ohm, the Owl, the walls around the Authority, and of course, the Doomsday Device. Given that with her new control, she now has a seemingly infinite amount of resources, it seems very likely that we haven't seen the extent of her creations. So I think it's very likely that her abilities as an engineer will again tie into things for the season's event. What that will be, it's hard to say. Maybe she'll create a giant owl. Some of the seasonal art seems to suggest that. Or maybe her engineering prowess will relate to getting the water out of the map. As mentioned, there have been leaks regarding new POIs popping up, and one of them has the code name The Ruins. Perhaps Jules will find a way to drain the map, and this location will be a wrecked version of one of our old POIs. But there's still one more giant piece that ties things together really nicely and manages to give us hints at what is to come with the final events of this season. So for those unaware, Midas was very literally inspired by the Greek and Roman legend known as King Midas. This myth tells the story of a king who gets the ability to turn anything he touches into gold from one of the gods. His greed ultimately ends with him almost starving to death and turning a loved one into solid gold. Feeling pity, however, the god allows Midas to atone for his greed if he promises to share his wealth with others. And really interesting to that too is that in order to redeem himself, he has to wash himself with water. So that might be a hint tied into the season trailer that there is more to come with Midas. Maybe his redemption is still yet to play out entirely. But let's get back to Jules. See, Midas isn't the first time Fortnite has related mythology to their game. Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war, was the codename for the original Fortnite map. Chapter 2's map is named similarly, being called Apollo, the god of archery, truth, prophecy, healing, and disease among other things. And so it's actually looking like Jules might also be related to mythology as well. Reddit user Toolbox007 has a great theory on this. He notes there was a Greek god of blacksmiths, metalworking, crafting, and fire named Hephaestus. And this seems to loosely relate to Jules' archetype, with an engineer being the modern-day equivalent to a blacksmith. 
And there's actually a lot more to it than that. In the 1981 film Clash of the Titans, Hephaestus builds a mechanical owl and then he gives it to the hero Perseus, along with a golden helmet, shield, and sword with special powers. Jules has a very similar looking mechanical owl, which is both her glider and back bling, own. And so if Epic is trying to build these connections, then it seems to suggest that Jules is the person who made all the mythic weapons, just like Hephaestus made his mythic weapons for Perseus. It's possible then that she's even responsible for the creation of the Infinity Blade. But what's most interesting about this connection, however, is the final battle at the end of the movie. You're seriously not going to believe this, but this final battle takes place between Perseus the hero and a giant kraken. No joke, like I seriously cannot make this stuff up. And especially when you consider that this map's theme is water, it could actually make a lot of sense that this would somehow relate to it. There's no other creature more mythic from the sea than the Kraken, and it's been something people have been talking about for seasons, regardless of the clickbait. So maybe there will be another character introduced midway through the season who will attempt to fight it. In the movie, it's ultimately the owl who ends up defeating the Kraken, so maybe Ohm will play out and help in this event. I'm hesitant to seriously support the idea of a Kraken event, but given Epic's track record of tying things into mythology, I think it's something that we should at least consider. But as for what will happen for certain, at this point it is still hard to say. Nothing is certain. What we know for sure is that Jules is the big player of season three, and we're going to have to keep an eye out on her as things progress. Anyway, that's going to be the video for today. If you guys are interested in more content, again, it would be really appreciated if you could subscribe to this channel. I've also recently started a second channel, and it would be awesome if you guys would go check that out as well and subscribe. Our current goal is to hit 25,000 subscribers, so it'd be awesome if you guys could make that happen. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Peace out, you freaking nerds.